Welcome to another unit of the blockchain deep dive module, this time dedicated to the blockchain innovation ecosystem. Blockchain technologies have been around for more than 10 years now, and the ecosystem has developed and evolved dramatically over the years. My name is Pierre Noir, and I have spent several years working in the blockchain ecosystem for both public institutions and startups. I am a lecturer at Sciences, at Sciences Po Paris School of Public Affairs, and I am a researcher on decentralized governance. In this short video, I will have the pleasure to walk you through this evolution and explain how the emergence of new actors within the blockchain ecosystem has led to diversification of use cases. Although some of these newcomers brought new ambitions, also new business constraints, which to some extent led them to depart from the original ideology and values where blockchain find its roots. The new blockchain-based services they initiated are contributing to a greater penetration of these technologies in our everyday lives. Let's rewind a bit and get back to the beginning. In 1993, the Cypherpunk Manifesto claimed that the Cypherpunk community is committed to use any cryptographic tool to build anonymous systems. In this founding document, Eric Hughes, its forward-thinking author, fiercely advocates for a decentralized, privacy-centric internet. It is this Cypherpunk ideology that infused many early attempts to create and develop digital cash, and later on, Bitcoin, which arguably was the first such successful attempt at creating a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. That is the name Satoshi Nakamoto, the pseudonymous investor, uh, inventor of Bitcoin, uh, chose for its white paper he originally shared to a mailing list dedicated to cryptography in October 2008. This publication needs to be placed back into its historical context. Just after a major financial crisis, there was unprecedented levels of defiance towards the financial system. The very first block of the blockchain, Bitcoin blockchain even refers directly to a headline that mentions the bailout of British banks. Now, every major financial institution has an innovation team that works on distributed ledger technologies today, but Bitcoin was really intended to create an alternative, radical one, to the centralized financial system and its many pitfalls. In Bitcoin's early days, the ecosystem was still nascent, of course. It is made of small communities of cryptographers, developers, mostly individuals with high technological expertise, exchanging on forums and through mailing lists. The development of projects predominantly follows open source standards and respects decentralization with open teams of contributors gravitating around key figures, uh, influencers and core developers. At this time, this is when many altcoins, alternative versions based on Bitcoin's blueprint are created with incremental alterations to this open source model. And like Satoshi Nakamoto, this community, of course, valued highly privacy. Many of its members remained anonymous or pseudonymous, and this community at large maintained a real peer-to-peer -peer structure. As blockchain proves its resiliency, it is catching the attention of a new generation of developers, privacy enthusiasts and technologists. This fresh blood works with the older generation to create new blockchain infrastructures. Those new blockchain infrastructures would themselves enable new features and new use cases. In particular, Vitalik Buterin worked alongside a team of developers already active in the blockchain community and introduced Ethereum in 2014. First released the following year, Ethereum is a game changer for the blockchain ecosystem as it introduces 
successfully a virtual machine able to support the use of smart contracts. Smart contracts are little pieces of software, pieces of code that run on top of the blockchain and that can perform many kinds of operations using the blockchain crypto assets, in the case of Ethereum that's Ether, or new crypto assets, new tokens that are specifically created for this service and create themselves a sub-ecosystem within the blockchain that support them. They enable a new array of applications, often referred to as decentralized applications or dApps. Blockchain infrastructure that support smart contracts and dApps are themselves often referred to as Blockchain 2.0 to mark the shift away from older generations of blockchain that mostly were dedicated to the transfer and the storage of digital value. Now, although it was not the very first one, Ethereum's initial token sale proved that pre-selling tokens representing value or services that will be delivered to the buyer by a future project was a viable way to fund open source development of the same project. This new funding model triggered the beginning of the ICO era and sparked a Cumbrian explosion within the blockchain ecosystem. Thousands of new projects suddenly appeared all around the globe with ICOs, initial coin offerings, and other kinds of token sales to fund the development of new dApps and blockchain infrastructures altogether. Some were led by anonymous te teams, other by recognizable names within the ecosystem, but many newcomers who joined the field during that trend contributed new visions and new ideas to the blockchain ecosystem. Some of those projects were carried away by startups, other by big tech groups, and other by open communities gathered around nonprofit foundations that is in charge of administrating and handling the funds that would be raised during a token sale. All of those projects tackled new use cases in many different industries, from decentralized cloud computing to prediction markets, from video games to digital collectibles, or even attempts to create blockchain-based decentralized finance organizations such as venture capital funds or exchanges. In the meantime, financial corporations started taking notice of what was happening within the blockchain ecosystem. And especially, they were interested in the ability of what they call, what they also call, distributed ledger technologies (DLTs). The, the ability to create immutable ledgers, allowing entities which do not trust each other, including competing companies, to create digital records they could maintain and update and share in a collaborative manner. Blockchain as an infrastructure for trusted information could then facilitate interactions in complex ecosystems where information remained in, organiza in organizational silos, was scattered around technologically outdated databases, always centralized by an intermediary, a third party, and trusted with the information provided by each individual actors. Thus, harnessing blockchain technology held the promise of making financial ecosystems more efficient, reducing intermediary fees and processing time along the way, and also decreasing risks of fraud and the regulatory reporting complexity. And for the very same reasons, other industries started jumping on the bump wagon and building themselves new consortium to develop standardized blockchain-based infrastructures to improve interactions within other complex ecosystems, such as supply chain management, food or luxury goods traceability, smart grids, and renewable energy networks. Bringing competitors around the same table to envision a new blockchain infrastructure can be hard enough, but on top of this, those organizations had to face the technological limits of the public blockchains, such as the scalability um, that was really not enough to deal with the throughput uh, required for most of the identified use cases, the need to create permissions in those networks or to enforce privacy of transactions required for business data. This paired with 
additional legal uncertainty and incompatibility, such as the implementation of GDPR, which can be really difficult with immutable systems, led to the creation of new enterprise blockchains. They were created by corporations for corporations, and they kept some of the characteristic of blockchain techs, such as the use of cryptography to maintain an immutable record, or the use of open source licensing, while doing away with the peer-to-peer -peer pseudonymous and open nature of public permissionless blockchain. Enterprise blockchain, consortium blockchain, or private blockchain are all part, are all part of the same family. And they include, for instance, Hyperledger, hosted by the Linux Foundation, Corda, developed by R3, a consortium of financial institutions, or Quorum, that was created by American bank JP Morgan, and uh, that was recently acquired by Consensus, one of the largest blockchain technology providers in the world. Uh, all of those blockchains are easier to set up, and they contributed to lower the technical barrier to entry, which in turn had major European industry le leaders explore new use cases thanks to blockchain technology within consortia that were dedicated to a specific sector, such as, for instance, B3i with insurance, the Blockchain Game Alliance, co-founded by Ubisoft, or more generalist alliances such as Alastria in Spain. Jumping back outside of the corporate world, ICOs were promising to revolutionize and disrupt nearly everything, and in the same time bring the investors handsome returns. That of course caught the public eye, those projects, some of these projects raised millions, sometimes billions, in a matter of hours, and attracted both qualified institutions and sometimes you know, mainstream individuals. These record-breaking figures, alongside a worrying number of scams, and legislators and regulators around the globe step in to enforce existing laws and sometimes to create brand new regulatory frameworks specifically dedicated to token sales in an attempt to better protect investors and to integrate the blockchain economy within, its, within the greater tax system. But it would be wrong to think that regulation was the only way the public sector has influenced and is still influencing the blockchain ecosystem. For the same reason as corporations found an interest in blockchain technology, governments and administrations started experimenting with blockchain tech at the local, national and international level in order to modernize public services such as public records, notarization, digital identity, or even data sharing across public agencies private entities and the civic society. Now, states and public administrations are rather lucky because if they are willing to innovate, they can work with existing, uh, with the existing growing ecosystem of startups and corporation. With their central role outside of private competition, they prove to be a rather natural actors to federate the ecosystem around them and create blockchain-based digital infrastructures to support new public services. European countries and the Commission are extremely active on this, with several international public-private initiatives that created dedicated room for collaboration around blockchain tech and paved the way for new large-scale projects. The European, the European Blockchain Observatory and Forum has been followed by the European Blockchain Partnership and the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure. All of them have the potential to set standards across the EU uh, that could bring, that could be crucial factors in democratizing the use of blockchain-based services in any European citizen's everyday life. Going hand in hand with the meteoric rise of value of crypto assets, there has been some significant, considerable amounts of concentration even, with, even within the public blockchain ecosystem. Some of the leading crypto asset exchanges, leading mining pools or oracles or stablecoin service providers are becoming massive players, sometimes acting as gatekeepers key intermediaries or significant trusted third parties that are all actively threatening the idea of decentralization that is at the heart of the blockchain ideology and both the security and the independence that should come with it. 
In reaction, the recent years have seen a flurry of decentralized finance applications that try to go back to those technological and ideological roots. This new DeFi ecosystem is made up of plenty of dApps that try to create fully automated and decentralized applications that are alternatives to traditional financial services, but also to these blockchain organizations that they deem are too trust-based or too centralized. Decentralized exchanges, for instance, rely on their smart contract to maintain an algorithmic market, which enables transactions between users without any third-party intervention. Another great example is MakerDAO, a decentralized autonomous organization that has been initiated by Danish entrepreneur Rune Christensen, which develops and manages the DAI. The DAI is a stable coin, a crypto asset that is meant to keep its parity with the US dollar and whose entirely governed by its community. The blockchain ecosystem has radically changed over the years. And paradoxically enough, while it finds its origins in crypto-anarchist and cypherpunk ideologies that were fiercely against trusted third parties and that wanted to disrupt the financial system, it is perhaps through the investment and the involvement of big corporations, including financial institutions, and of national and international public administrations that blockchain technologies will truly achieve mainstream adoption. However, it would be wrong to believe that the ecosystem is completely split into two communities which do not communicate with each other. While it is true that the public sector and the corporate world keeps investing massive amount of money and of resources uh, ar around their own use cases, new open source, privacy focused and decentralized projects are created nearly every day by small talented teams from all over the planet who are fascinated by both the technical opportunities brought by blockchain and the core values that are baked into it. More importantly, it is at the interface of these communities that there seems to be the greatest potential for change. It is when this ecosystem as a whole starts working together that we can see truly innovative projects emerge, projects which have the potential to impact the life of every user in Europe and beyond. Now, like with any kind of infrastructure development, especially with the complex nature of blockchain and how it challenges the way we think about, about governance, it will take a lot of time, it will involve significant organizational efforts, important research and development investments, and an irreducible amount of risk. But they might change our daily life, introducing new ways for us to identify ourselves, to authenticate important documents, or even one day to use crypto assets or central bank digital currencies based on blockchain technologies to pay for stuff online. As authoritarian regimes around the world exert an, inc an increasing control over their own blockchain ecosystem and release new public services that are inspired by blockchain technologies to strengthen state surveillance, I think it is absolutely essential that we remember the value of the blockchain ecosystem and that we protect and support its diversity because it is the only way to make sure the new blockchain based services developed by small anonymous teams or corporations or states alike remain resilient, secure, as decentralized as possible, truly empowering for their users and respecting both their privacy and their freedom. Thank you very much for listening.